Hello, Pain Free for Life members, and welcome to another Monday 10 minute training. Goodness, we've done so many of these now. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking specifically about post surgical recovery for knee surgeries. So I've done a previous post-surgical um, video, uh, but people have been asking specifically about how to deal with knees. Now, knees do have a little bit of a difference to other surgical things, only in the sense that knees are tricky to treat. We're going to try and cover that today, um, as well as go over the full post-surgical protocol. So even if you don't have a knee surgery coming up, or you haven't had a knee, or you haven't, you've had a different kind of surgery, I think you're going to be able to benefit from this training, okay? So the process of surgical recovery can often confuse people. You know, questions like, do we treat scars right away? When can I start treatment? Can I treat the surgical uh, incision directly? If so, when? How soon can I do that? The truth is that there is a very straightforward protocol series to post-surgical treatment, and it actually comes quite close to wound healing with just a couple of different changes. And that shouldn't come as a surprise to us. I mean, after all, a surgery is often just an intentional wound. Now, first off, I want to emphasize that you can absolutely start treatment day one after surgery, because I get asked that question a lot. How soon can I start treatment? You may not be able to access the uh, area that was operated on directly right away, right? It could be covered in bandages. It could be too difficult to reach. Um, but especially with knees, you know, your other knee, typically you don't have both replaced at the same time. Your other knee should be readily available to treat. So step number one is to remember that you can treat the mirrored side of the body. If you had surgery on your left knee, perform the protocol on your right knee instead. Knees are best treated generally from the back. So you want to go in, if you think of your elbow here as, as at the back of your knee, you want to go in to this area right in here. And this is just because there's a lot more nerve endings behind the knee than there are on top. And the skin is very thin. There's a lot of bone. You might not even feel the treatment on the front of your knee the way you would on the back. So we highly encourage that. But from a knee surgery perspective, even a dose and a zero behind the non-operated on knee can be enough to make a substantial difference to the healing process. Now, if you have a PEMF device like the, uh, I have it here, like the Via Chi device, or you have the Chi Wave PEMF pad, well, you'll be able to treat the surgical site directly as soon as surgery is over as well. Now, the four-step treatment protocol for surgery is a bit of a reverse of what we might normally do, uh, only because it flips rule number one, which is to treat all scars on its head. It puts it at the end of the protocol. This is because we do not want to prevent scar tissue, which is being used to seal a wound or a surgical site. We don't want to prevent that. General treatment is going to most likely prevent any major scarring. Just treating the area in general is going to be working towards the healing process, and it's going to stop any really major adhesions going on. But it will still allow the scar tissue to solve its function, to serve its function. So we don't necessarily want to go in and treat those scars day one. We're going to leave that. That's for a um, li little bit later. So as long as you remember, you can treat the mirrored side of the body and you can start treating straight away, you get ready to get started with this protocol. Now, rule number one of post-surgical healing is actually not going to be to treat the area at all. It's going to be to detox the body from the sedation and the medications that you would have been on for surgery to happen. So everyone responds to anesthesia differently. Some people wake up agitated, confused, nauseated. Other people wake up feeling just fine. If you have a history of having issues with anesthesia, there's a good chance you're going to experience again. So how can microcurrent treat this? You're going to need to support the liver to ensure that the body can process the detox from these medications. So I have a Y electrode here somewhere. I don't actually have a Y electrode, but I do have the massage electrode. So I can show you with this. So Treatment method one, you're going to plug in your attachment. You're going to set your device to a soft tissue mode. So this is 77 hertz if you have the evolution or the genesis. 
AVA 90 Hertz in the Pro Sport or Santa Soft T in the Pinnacle. Next, you're going to paint over the surface of the liver. So the liver is underneath your right pec area here, okay? And it stretches along just a bit. I'm going to just uh, angle my camera a little bit lower down. There we go. It stretches along just a bit along here, but it's thinner. It goes further down here. So what I like to do is I like to paint the whole area. So if I was using this electrode, let me just plug it in, be a little bit more realistic. I would treat over this area, getting rid of any active zones. And I would want to spend three to five minutes doing this each day because you need to make sure your liver is getting the assistance it needs to move things forward. And this is from any surgery, not just surgery from uh, for knees, okay? So that's step one. That will help you to detox these effects. So after you've detoxed from the initial effects of sedation medications, this is when it's time to start treating inflammation and pain. So as far as inflammation goes, when your body is injured or it's recovering from surgery, the immune system responds. It, it dilates these blood vessels and it transports more blood to the area. And it brings with it loads of immune cells, hormones, other immune responses. Now, these measures, they provide some defenses against bacteria, other pathogens, things uh, that might take advantage of the injury to gain a foothold in the body. This is a process we call acute inflammation. And typically it is a short term issue that provides protection so that our body can heal. Inflammation by itself is not a bad thing. It's an essential part of your healing process. However, after about the first 48 hours, it's probably not still supposed to be there. So although inflammation is a good thing at the beginning, if it goes beyond that, if it persists, it becomes chronic. And typically they'll say that inflammation doesn't become chronic till it's been six months. I, I, I don't believe in that. I think that your body gets the maximum optimum use out of that acute inflammation in the first 48 hours. And after that, you should be able to get some pain relief. Why is it still hurting, right? So we need to be able to dial in and work on that. So this becoming chronic. This, this can occur when the body becomes hypersensitive to threats and it either doesn't shut down on cue after this acute immune response or it starts perceiving threats where there aren't any. And this will make your body start attacking itself and this will build more inflammation. This will lead to disease. It will lead to breakdown and degeneration. So in short, if the inflammation, which is the root of all of this pain, is not addressed, the pain sooner or later comes roaring back often worse than before. This is why I like to encourage people to make sure they talk to their surgeons first about the medication they're going to be on after and how soon can they safely taper off. Make it clear you don't want to be on these things for very long. And do it how you need to do it because you should muting the inflammation is just going to make your body scream louder. Um, so initially, sure, it makes sense. You've just been cut open. You've had a knee replacement, which is a very um, aggressive surgery. You know, you need pain relief, but you don't want to be doing this for too long. You want to be able to move on and get rid of the inflammation. So you need to look at this and you need to remember that you cannot heal in the presence of inflammation. You just can't. So you must always tackle inflammation first if you ever hope to initiate repair of damaged tissue. Now, in working on this inflammation, you're also working directly on your pain, right? So as pain levels, uh, as inflammation decreases, pain goes down. Pain is a symptom of inflammation. Now, microcurrent allows you to correct your body's communication signals to the brain. It's going to identify these problems, and then it's going to ask the brain to commit to fixing the issue. So this is a critical thing, right? This, this is critical because this shows us that we are not covering it up. We're not covering up the issue. Conventional medicine is all about covering these things up with these medications. We are getting to the root cause and turning it down. So how do we do that? Okay, so first things first, again, I am missing a Y probe today, which is unfortunate. Um, first things first, you are going to do vagus nerve stimulation. Now, the vagus nerve oversees your body's stress response and will actually create 
or block the creation of inflammation. And in doing this, you can find this relief from this unproductive post-surgical inflammation by stimulating this neural highway with microcurrent. So Avazia Life Evolution or the pinnacle of the devices to go with here, um, Pro Sport works as well. And the seven to 12 Hertz program is the right one. So again, I've never actually used this new probe for Vegas Nerve, but we will try it today. So once you've set yourself to seven to 12 Hertz, you're gonna go to the left side of your body and you're going to feel the carotid artery, feel for that pulse. I have to be quiet to find it. There it is. Okay, so then I'm just gonna put the probe right behind it and I'm gonna adjust the power until I can feel it. We'll see how this works. Oh yeah, there you go, it's, it's, it's doing it. You wanna feel that little jiggle on your neck. That indicates that you're in the right spot, but you don't want it to be uncomfortable. Now, I would just run this for three to 20 minutes a day. So you don't, you can do three minutes, four times a day. That's the kind of prescribed way of doing it. But post-surgically, there's gonna be a lot of stress on your body. You might wanna do a 20 minute session. Wait until you feel relaxed. Once you feel that relaxation kick in, you're on the right path. It means your inflammatory response is tuned down. Now you can and should also treat local inflammation in the area as well. Remembering with knees that you're probably gonna need to treat behind the knee, not um, all around it. Any anti-inflammatory program is gonna work here. Something that operates above 100 Hertz, modulate 121 Hertz, 350, Santa Surf 350, Santa Pain. Um, you know, you've got those modes there that are gonna work. But with the inflammation out of the way, we finally get to move on to step three, which is enhanced blood flow. Now, regardless of what you do with microcurrent, you're gonna be enhancing the blood flow. And increasing blood flow is gonna promote post-surgical healing because it delivers white blood cells that ward off infection, it delivers red blood cells that kickstart recovery, and it delivers red blood cells that halt degeneration. So all in all, all of this blood flow is perfect. It is what we wanna be doing. So. We do this, we stimulate the area directly with microcurrent. Um, I prefer that to PEMFs. The difference is 450% increased blood flow with microcurrent, about 120% increased blood flow with PEMFs. So you get a lot more with the microcurrent. So I would almost even say if you can't treat the area directly, treat the other knee with the microcurrent directly, it will be better than doing the PEMF for circulation. So the programs you can use, um, Vaso is a good program, FMRSI or Blue Stim in descending order of what's good, you know, like the best one is Vaso. Um, but you should also keep in mind if you are a Pinnacle user, and I know users of the Avazia Life Pinnacle are growing out there, you have an all-in-one program here. Just use Santa IP, which is your injury protocol used for wounds, post-surgical, all of that stuff. That's going to take care of your inflammation and your blood flow all in one. Now, this is all we do for the first few weeks, and then we can look to step four of the protocol. So with this new circulation in play, we can start to look at addressing post-surgical scar tissue, but only after you've been a couple of weeks post-surgery post-surgery, okay? We need to allow that initial acute healing phase time to bond the tissue before we neutralize it. And this is what I was getting out of the beginning where people can get confused. Rule number one, treat all scars becomes rule number four here. Um, so it just gets turned on its head. So it's simple though. All you're going to do is you're going to neutralize it with 77 hertz or Santa Deep 77 in the pinnacle for that increased depth. You're simply going to paint over the area for around three minutes to neutralize it. This is one case where treating the scar on the top of the knee is gonna be better than going in behind. You should treat the scars directly as they're visible. Uh, you may not have a scar yet, but the incision, right? You'll see the incision. That's where you wanna go. Okay, that was a big one. That was longer than most of these. Um, so my Monday 10 minute training became a Monday 15 minute training, but I hope you all forgive me for that. Uh, but that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, if you want to see more of these, drop a like on the video, drop a comment. If you have any questions about this post-surgical healing process, please do not hesitate to ask. Otherwise, I will see you next week for another Monday 10-minute training. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Bye-bye.